My name is Vinnie Moore and welcome to my second Hot Licks video. I have a few different things I'm going to talk about today, but before we get into them, let's tune up real fast. I'm tuned to A440, so if you have a meter, you might want to just tune to that, but in case you don't, here's an A. <laughs> The triplet can you be a good vehicle uh, to use for speed picking and also for moving around to different positions on the neck pretty conveniently. So I'm going to cover some really simple ideas that are basic and show you, show you how you can build them up to come up with some cool sounding ideas. Okay, I'm going to base this section around the key of D minor just for the sake of simplicity. I'm going to start off with some descending triplets. All right. The first thing is going to be a simple three note descending triplet containing the notes F, E, and D. And uh, one thing we can do with that is move it up the neck or up the D minor scale diatonically on one string and come up with this. I'll play it fast for you and then I'll slow it down. Okay, here that is slowed down and notice it's just triplet patterns, the same picking pattern all up the neck, just moving it around to different positions. There you have it, a real simple triplet idea, and you can use it to build up a cool sounding lick. Now let's take that same principle, but instead of using just one string for this idea, let's move the lick across all the strings, right down the D minor scale, like this. All right, now here that is slowed down. So there's another example of that, what you can do with that simple triplet. Now let's take an, a two note group here and build six notes, two triplets on two notes. The basic, pa two strings, excuse me. The basic pattern will be this. We can take that and move that up the neck and then also move it down the scale just like we did the single note triplet. So here it is. Okay, now here that is slowed down. Let's take that and move it across all the strings down the D minor scale. Here, that is slow.
All right, so there's a bunch of different things you can do with a simple descending triplet. You know, you can build a bunch of cool licks from that. Uh, for, I'm going to give you an example here. I played on a Pepsi commercial a few years ago, and I used one of these uh, very licks that I just showed you. So I'll show you what I'm doing here just as an example of how you can use something really simple to kind of build an exciting lick. Okay, now this is in the key of A minor, and it's kind of a build-up type of thing using the the two-string triplet pattern. So here it is. All right, now here that is slowed down. Alright, so that's an example of how you can take a simple idea and build something cool sounding over it. It's just a real basic two-string triplet idea. Alright, so in the first group of things there, what we did is we used a descending triplet. Now we're going to turn it around and use an ascending triplet. Instead of playing F, E, and D, we're going to play D, E, and F. And we can go through all the same steps, basically, and come up with a whole new group of licks. So the first one is going to be taking ascending triplet moving it up one string right up the D minor scale. Now here that is slow. All right, now let's take that same idea and move it across the strings, uh, down the D minor scale. Okay, here it is, slow. All right, now let's use an ascending group of two triplets using six, I mean two strings, and the basic pattern will be this. And let's take that and move it up the neck. Here it is, slow down. That's a real common lick to people who are first getting into the, pick, the fast picking type of stuff. I know when I first started getting into it, it's one of the very first licks I got into. I think I picked it up off a Dimiola record. It's a real, really nice lick. So let's take that same thing and, and move it down the scale. Okay, here that is, slow down. So there are some examples of an ascending type of triplet and how you can build up a bunch of cool ideas from that. Now one thing I want to mention here is I'm showing you things in a particular key and in particular positions and also on like particular groups of strings like say the E and the B string but don't limit yourself to just those particular areas I'm just showing showing you as an example for the sake of simplicity there's an unlimited amount of possibilities you can do with simple things like this so experiment and try to move it around and come up with as many ideas as you can for instance that last idea <laughs> Move that around to every position you can think of in the D minor scale and come up with a bunch of different sounding runs.
There's all kinds of things you can do with each one of these licks. And another example is when I show you things on one string or two string, like this. You can play that on any string. So again, just experiment and come up with as much as you can based on these ideas. Okay, the next lick is going to be a little bit more difficult. It's a three-string lick, and your right hand is going to have a tendency to want to start to play a downstroke when you should play an upstroke. Um, so I'm going to play the lick, and I'll slow it down for you, and I'll show you what I mean. You know, some of the groups of strings are going to start with a downstroke, and some of the groups are going to start with an upstroke. And for some reason, you know, the right hand has a natural tendency to want to start each new lick with a downstroke. But make sure you really work on consistently picking down, up, down, up, and, you know, keep that together. Okay, so here's the lick. Here it is, slow down. So if you notice, each lick basically lasts for nine notes and, and has three, string, three strings. It involves three strings. And since it's an odd number, every other uh, picking stroke for every other run is going to be a downstroke. But, you know, as I said, your right hand's going to want to start each lick on a downstroke. So make sure you really concentrate on that and start every other lick on a downstroke and every other one on an upstroke. All right, now I have a three more ideas here for picking. These are common licks that I like to use a lot. And the first one would be this. Slow down, that's just a basic pattern. Basically two triplets. You can do two things with that. You can just keep it in one position and play it over and over again. Or you can move it up the neck. And here that is slowed down for you. They're harder to play slow, actually. Okay, the last two are going to be really classical sounding. I got them from listening to violin and also flute players, or flutists, whatever you want to call them. But anyway, it's going to be, again, a six-note pattern, a group of two triplets, and the first one will be this. Now you can take that and move it up one string. All right, here that is, slow down. Now, you can also move that across all the strings like this. Okay, now let's take that and make a two-string idea out of it like this. Here it is, slow down.
right, so there's a few things you can do with that one particular triplet idea. So the next and final lick is going to be that same type of thing, but actually backwards. It's going to be this. That'll be our basic lick, and we're going to take that and move it through all the same stages. So here it is, up one string. Slow down. Now move it across all the strings. And the last thing you can do with it is make a two-string idea out of it. The basic pattern would be this. Let's move that up the neck. So there you have it. There's a bunch of different triplet picking type of ideas, and I hope it is very clear to you that by just taking simple triplet ideas, you can build up just a bunch of cool sounding riffs. They're, they're a good vehicle for speed picking. They make it real easy for that. And also, it is very easy to move around on different positions of the neck with your left hand using you know these type of patterns. It makes those easy also. OK, so that's going to complete my triplet pattern section and I'm going to move in on to another section here I'm going to cover modes all right I've done like a hundred clinics in the past year and a half and to my surprise I've learned that most guitar players out there don't have a clue about what modes are and a lot of them who do know about them are really confused by them so I decided that since it's a, such an important thing that I was going to try to cover it here in very simple terms. I'm going to show you the way I look at it, and hopefully I can clear it up for people that are confused. And for those of you who know nothing about modes, I hope you can see how important they really are to your guitar playing, your impro improvisation, and also your songwriting. So let's get started on these. I'm going to use the key of C major for my examples. And of course, everybody knows the notes in C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. The first thing we should do is look at a chord scale in the key of C major. And these are going to be all the chords, the basic major and minor chords in this particular key. Okay, so the first chord is going to be C, obviously, it's the root. The second chord is going to be D minor. The third chord is E minor. The fourth chord is F. And then G. A minor. And then B half diminished or you could call that a B minor 7 flat 5. It's the exception chord here. It breaks the rule because there's a flat 5, so it's a little weird. And then, of course, we'd be back to our octave C major. So there you see we have seven different chords based on the key of C major. And uh, it's really important to know that each chord is related to the key of C major. None of the notes in any of the chords goes outside of the key of C major. Everything is related. It's all the same notes, but just starting from a different point within the scale. So the first thing to learn about modes, which is actually the hardest, is remembering the stupid names. You know, some guy probably 15,000 years ago named these, and he probably did it just to confuse us guitar players in the 20th century. But anyway, it's real important to remember the names of these, so I'm going to give you the names, and through the magic of television, we'll flash them across the screen. Okay, the names of the modes are Ionian, 
Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. Told you that was pretty weird. Okay, it's important to remember two things, as I said before, the names of the modes and also the order in which they come in, because the order in which they were just listed and that I just mentioned them in is consistent. That's always the order they come in, and so remember that order, kind of like your alphabet. Okay, so we could say that each chord we covered here in the C major scale represents a different mode. Each chord was a different step of the major scale, and so was each mode, and that's what modes are all about. So let's cover the names, and, and sh I'll show you what chords represent what modes. Okay, the first chord, C, which is the root, represents Ionian mode. Now, remember this rule that Ionian mode is always a major scale. It's always the root of a major key. So if somebody said, let's jam in, in, in C Ionian, you wouldn't know that you were in the key of C major. If somebody said they wanted to jam in G Ionian, then you'd know very simply that you were in the key of G major. So it's, it's a very easy rule. You know, Ionian is always the major scale or the major key you're in. Okay, so the next is Dorian, which is represented in this particular key by D minor. We know two things about Dorian. We know Dorian is typically a minor chord and also that it is the second step of a major scale. Okay, the next mode would be Phrygian, which is represented by E minor. Phrygian is typically a minor chord and also it is the third step of a major scale. Okay, the fourth step is Lydian, which is F in this case. The fifth step is Mixolydian, which is major, which is G. The sixth step is A minor, which is Aeolian. Now, okay, here's rule number two. Everybody knows that a major key has a relative minor. In this particular key, C major, the relative minor is A minor. And this represents Aeolian mode. So the rule is Aeolian mode always represents the minor scale or the minor key that you're playing in. So remember that because it's going to be easy to relate things to that later. Okay, so our final chord here is going to be the B uh, minor 7 flat 5 or the B half diminished. It's going to represent Locrian. This is the weird one in the bunch. So that completes the seven different modes. So uh, I showed you all the chords in a major scale and we showed you what chords represent what modes by the name. Okay, so the next thing I recommend that you do is put all these chords on tape either with a drum machine or a click track so you can keep time and practice playing a one octave scale over the different modes. So in other words, start first with a C chord, put that on tape, and play a C scale over top of it in one octave. And that'll give you an idea of what Ionian mode sounds like. So let's move up to the next chord, or the next mode, which is Dorian here. Put a D minor on tape and play a D Dorian mode. And one thing I want to stress before I move on here is right there on the D Dorian mode, I didn't play a D minor scale. I didn't play a D major scale. I played a D Dorian mode, and all that is is basically a C scale, but starting from a D note. So don't get confused and think just because I'm starting with a D here that I'm going outside of the key of C major. I'm not. I'm using all the same notes and as I will with all these different modes. And I would kind of relate this to the piano. It's If you played all the white keys on the piano, you'd be playing in the key of C major, obviously. You could start a scale on the C note and play, and you'd be in C major. You could also start a scale on the D note, the E note, the F note, any note, as long as you played all white keys, you'd still be in the key of C major. So don't get confused and think I'm going out of key here, I'm not. All right, so the next mode is, is uh, Phrygian, so put the E minor chord on tape and play the uh, mode over it. Okay, then move up to the uh, F chord, which is Lydian. gives you a good idea of what the Lydian mode sounds like. And then the next chord would be G, which would be Mixolydian, and uh, play that particular mode over top of the G. It's a good idea of what uh, Mixolydian sounds like. The next mode 
is aeolian, which is A minor, which we said was the root of the minor scale. We put that on tape and play a one octave scale over it. And then our final mode is going to be Locrian. It's going to be the B minor 7 flat 5 chord. So that gives you a good idea of what Locrian mode sounds like. Okay, so we went through all the different chords, modes here, and we played a one octave scale over them. And the whole point, really, in this was to show you, basically, that we're not going outside of the key of C major. We're just starting at different points in the C major scale. Many people get confused by that and think you're, like, changing the, the, the notes in the scale, and they get really confused, but, you know, don't let that happen. You're basically only in one key here, but starting at different points. Okay, so... Now what we're going to do is we're really going to define the sound of the modes. What we're going to do is take one b uh, bass note, and it's going to be a B here, and I want you to put this on tape and play all the different modes over this B note. So in other words, we're going to play B Ionian, B Dorian, B Phrygian, B Lydian, B Mixolydian, B Aeolian, and B Locrian. So we're going to have a bunch of different modes all over the B note, and this is going to help you really hear the different and the tonalities of all the different modes. So, the first thing we're going to do is want to build a B Ionian. Now, as we said before, B Ionian, the Ionian mode is always a major scale. So, very simply, we're going to be in the key of B major. So, put a B uh, note or a B major chord on tape and then play the B scale over it and then improvise with it a little bit just to get the feel for what it sounds like. All right, so there's a good example of what the Ionian mode sounds like. It reminds me of a real happy type of feel. Okay, so our next mode is going to be the Dorian mode. So let's build a Dorian, B Dorian. We know two things. We know that Dorian is minor, so it's going to be a B minor chord. And we also know that B, that Dorian is the second step of a major scale. So the way I look at this is rather than, you know, remember all the notes in a Dori Dorian scale, you know, the typical way it's taught is like a Dorian is a major scale with a sharp this or a flat that, you know, who really cares? All you need to do is relate it to the basic key you're in. And since we know that Dorian is the second step of a major scale, then obviously the first step is A. So very simply, you know you're in the key of A major, but you're playing over the second chord, B minor, and you're starting with a B note. So put the B minor chord on tape, and uh, play the, the B Dorian scale, which is going to be the A major, starting with a B note. All right, so there's a good example of what a Dorian mode sounds like. I call it the Western mode because for some reason it reminds me of a cowboy movie or a Western movie. I can almost visualize John Wayne riding a horse through the desert. It might not remind you of anything like that, but I think it's real important to get a visualization of each mode or each sound. Because if you can kind of be reminded of a different feeling or a different, even a song or you know, a Western movie, whatever. If, if a mode can remind you of something, then it's going to be easier for you to remember the sound of that mode, and I think it can be real helpful in the long run. So try to visualize the sound. You know, put it into some thoughts in your head so you can easily remember it. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is build a B Phrygian, because Phrygian is next in line. We know that Phrygian is typically a minor chord, and it's the third step of a major scale. So if B is the third step, then obviously... 
our first step must be G. So we know we're playing in the key of G major, and its relative minor would be E minor. So we'd be playing in G major, E minor, but starting with a B note over a B chord. It's as simple as that. So put the B minor chord on tape, play the scale over it, and then improvise to get a feel for it. So there's what Phrygian sounds like. It's kind of a mysterious, eerie type of feel. And there is an exception on this mode. We said that it was typically a minor chord, but one thing I want to point out, and this is done a lot in classical music, is you can substitute a major chord here. So we'd make B minor, B major, which would mean we would change the D note to D sharp. Make B major. So now go through, put the chord on tape again, play the scale, but what you have to do is, since we made D, D sharp, we have to change all the notes in the scale from D to D sharp. Okay, so here's what that sounds like. All right, so there's the other way we can use a Phrygian mode. Again, that reminds me of something really mysterious and like an eerie type of feel, almost a little bit Egyptian. Okay, so our next mode in line is Lydian. So we're going to build a B Lydian. B Lydian. Lydian is a major chord, so it's going to be B major. And Lydian is the fourth step from a major scale. So very easily we can find out that the first step is F major. So we know we're in the key of F major, and the relative minor would be E flat minor. So let's play that scale over the B chord, which is going to be Lydian mode. So there's a good idea of what Lydian sounds like. Um, I call it the movie mode because it's, for some reason it's used a lot in movie soundtracks. I notice it a lot, especially when somebody's flying through the air like Superman. They use the Lydian mode to express that. I don't know why, but I'm just kind of used to hearing it in movies now, so that's kind of how I remember it, actually. Uh, so, you know, again, put that on tape and play the Lydian mode over it. One thing that really defines the Lydian mode is that there's a tritone. Over the B chord, we have an F note in there, which is really kind of weird, but if you play the B and play the F in a higher octave, you get like a really cool kind of effect. That's one thing that really defines the tonality of a Lydian mode. It kind of sounds a little weird just playing it over one note like this, but I think if you experiment with it and play it in some of your chord progressions, you'll find it's a, a real interesting mode. It's one of my very favorite ones. Okay, so our next thing we're going to do is build a Mixolydian mode, a B Mixolydian, because mi Mixolydian is the next in line. So we know that Mixolydian is a major chord, so it's going to be B major. And we also know that the Lydian, I mean, the Mixolydian mode is the fifth step of a major scale, or we know that Aeolian follows Mixolydian. So if somebody said, hey, Vin, let's jam and be Mixolydian, how I, know, how I would know where I was at is I would relate it to the Aeolian mode, which is right after it. So I would quite simply look at the neck, play the B chord, move it up a whole step to the Aeolian mode, which is a C sharp minor chord. So I would know that I was basically in the key of C sharp minor or uh, E major would be the relative major, and I'd just be starting from the B note. 
So put, again, put that on tape and play the C sharp minor scale starting with B and you'll get the Mixolydian tonality. So there you have your Mixolydian sound. It reminds me of like a happy summertime type of feel. And please ignore those couple wrong notes I played in there. I think you got a good idea of what it sounds like from the uh, majority of them, which were right, I hope. But anyway, that reminds me of a summertime feel. And there's a couple examples I played for you in there. Norwegian Wood and uh, also Freeway Jam by Jeff Beck. So again, I told you to try to visualize something to re mind you of the mode you can even you know remember songs and you know the norwegian wood is a really strong type of tonality you can remember that very easily so if you have trouble remembering mixolydian you can think of that and it'll give you a feel for what it's all about okay so our next mode is aeolian we're going to build b aeolian um, as we said before aeolian is always the root of a minor scale so if we're playing b aeolian we're very simply in the key of b minor and the relative major is d so let's put that on tape and play the scale over it and then improvise with it a little bit. So there's B Aeolian, that's one of the most common modes, uh, Aeolian and Ionian, because they're just basic major and minor scales. Uh, everybody's pretty familiar with that tonality already, I assume, and to me that reminds me of like a more sad type of feel. Okay, so our last and final mode is going to be the weird one, Locrian, and so the chord is going to be a B half diminished, and put that on tape and play the scale over top of it, and then improvise with it a little bit. what a B Locrian sounds like. I told you it was pretty weird. And by the way, how we find out what key we're in right there is I would relate it to the Aeolian mode, which is right before it, so I would know if we were playing B Locrian that we were in the key of A minor, or also the major scale is right next to it too, the Ionian. So we could say it's either the seventh step from a major scale or it's the second step from a minor, but it'd be easier just to compare it to the minor scale and know which is right next to it and play in A minor and uh, just start from the B note over the B chord. Uh, to me, that's the most difficult lick to play over. It's a little too weird for me. I, I'm not real comfortable with it, but the best way to do it, or you know, what I normally do, is just to play a bunch of diminished triads over top of it. <laughs> that type of thing, and that usually works. Okay, so that pretty much completes the mode section here. Um, we did two things. I showed you a C major scale and how I, we named all the modes and showed you the intervals and how we were basically still in the key of C major. We didn't step outside. And then we built every mode over a B note. 
and by that you could hear really hear the difference in the tonality of all the modes so i recommend like putting these on tape like i showed you and practicing them a lot and really getting familiar with the sound of each mode you know you can take each mode and spend a day with it experimenting with it and you know this just opens up new doors and there's new things to work with you know who wants to play in aeolian or Ionian all the time. That gets boring. You know, the more tonalities you know, the more you can express in your songwriting and also your soloing. So I think modes are something that are very important and they get overlooked a lot. You know, people don't want to learn them and I think basically it's because the way they're taught is so confusing. There's no reason they have to be confusing. A mode is just a different step of a major scale. So try to work with these and get them down and come up with a lot of cool ideas and you'll find that they'll really open up a whole new dimension for you. All right, so my final section is going to be a section on the left hand. On my first Hot Licks video, I put a lot of emphasis on the right hand with picking exercises and things like that. And a lot of people at my clinics asked me if I would cover some things on the left hand, and I think it's, re it's real important, so I'm going to base my final section on the left hand. And I'm going to break this section down into two parts. I'm going to break it down into exercises to help build up your strength, articulation, and uh, accuracy in the left hand. And the second section is going to be just a bunch of common licks that are my favorite ones that I'd like to use, and I'll show you how to move them around on the neck. Okay, so I'm going to use the key of A minor uh, for these ideas. Actually, I don't need to talk about that until we actually get into the soloing. The exercises kind of aren't in a key, but the first group of exercises are going to be two finger exercises. In other words, we're going to isolate each group of two fingers. We're going to use the first and second, then the third and fourth, whoops, second and third, I can't even count my own fingers here, and then the third and fourth. We're going to break it down in groups of two fingers. And the first thing is going to be a simple hammer-on. I'm just going to take one note on the first fret and hammer the higher one. And then we're going to move that across all the strings. Okay, now we'll do that same hammer-on thing with the second and third fingers. And then the third and fourth, which are the most difficult fingers to use. Okay, so now we're going to do that same thing backwards. We're going to use a pull-off, so we're going to start with a higher note and pull off to a lower one. And let's use each group of two fingers for those also across the strings. Then the second and third. And then the third and fourth. Okay, now what we're going to do is a hammer and a pull. So we're going to play a note with a pick, hammer a higher note, and pull back down to the original note. So it's kind of a trill type of idea. We're going to go through all the same groups of two fingers. Okay, and then the last part of this is going to be a pull and a hammer. So do that with all groups of two fingers. So that completes the two finger exercises and I'm sure they sound really boring and they're a little boring to play sometimes too, but they're really going to help your left hand if you can do these over and over again. Okay, so now let's move on to some three and four note or finger type of exercises here. And the first one is going to be a basic four note hammer on and we're going to pick the first note and hammer uh, chromatically three higher. And let's move that across all the strings. All right, and you can take that and move it up a fret of, at a time, too, if you want to keep doing it over and over. Start at a comfortable speed and then, and then gradually build, build up the speed as, you know, 
a week or two go by. But one thing I would recommend with these exer exercises is using a metronome, especially in this example, because your fingers are going to have a tendency to want to rush the notes and not hit them right on the beat. So if you use a metronome, it'll really help your timing, and you'll be able to, you know, monitor how each finger should hit the note right on the beat. Okay, so the next thing is going to be pull-offs using four fingers. So we're going to start with a higher note and use a bunch of pull-offs. And again, you can take these and move them up the fretboard, fret at a time, as far as you want to go. All right, so now let's do some three finger exercises. So let's use the first, second, and third finger and do some hammer ons and then some pull offs. So the first hammer on is going to be this. Again, take that and move it up the neck as much as you feel you need to do it. And then we're going to do some pull-offs here using three notes. Three, two, one pattern. And again, you can take that and move it up. Okay, so we did some uh, three note exercises using these three fingers. Now we're going to get into the real killer ones, which are these three. So we're going to do the same basic exercises, but I'm going to find that it's a lot more difficult um, because this part of the hand isn't as strong. So first, let's do the hammer-ons. Again, take that, move it up the neck. You know, keep doing it over and over, and you'll find it'll help a lot. And then the real killer one is going to be the pull-offs here. Um, four, three, and two. My hand's like ready to fall off already from that one just by doing it like two cycles there. So that's a really, really hard exercise, but it'll really help strengthen your pinky and it'll help all your fingers. All these exercises will help all your fingers kind of work together as a team. Like this could be the quarterback and like, you know, this is the lineman and whatever. I'll, I'll stop there. Okay. So that pretty much completes the exercise section. One thing I want to stress that's real important is, you know, really push yourself with these, but don't push yourself to the point where you think you might hurt yourself. For instance, if you feel any pain, then uh, just stop for a while and come back to it. Uh, to be honest, when I went through these, what I would do is I, was, I would always push my left hand. You know, it would get tired, but I would keep pushing it and pushing it. I think as with any, you know, physical type of exercise, you have to push yourself a little bit. But, you know, there's a point where you, you have to stop. Uh, there's a point that is too much. So be your own best judge of this. And if you feel you're going too far to where you might hurt your hand, stop for a while and come back to it, especially if you feel any pain. But remember, push it a little bit. So there are a bunch of different exercises, and these will definitely help strengthen your left hand, and also you'll build articulation and accuracy with these. Don't worry about speed with them at first. Start at a comfortable tempo with a metronome, and gradually you know, build it up over a period of time. And a metronome is also good for that because it'll help you monitor just how much faster you're, you're getting with things. Okay, so my last section of the left hand here is gonna be a, a group of licks. And these are just basic licks that I like to use a lot. The first one I'm probably not even gonna be able to play after doing that last exercise. But anyway, here's my best shot. All these are gonna be in the key of A minor. I play them fast. I'll show you what they're based off of, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll break them down real slow for you. Some of them are like two, are like three and four note things, so they're already going to be simple, and I'll show you how you can build them up to come up with some cool type of ideas. So here is the first lick. All right, now I'm going to show you what that's based on. It's based on a simple group of eight notes, and here, here it is, the basic lick. Notice I'm only picking the first note and the rest are hammer-ons and pull-offs. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking the lick and I'm taking that same pattern, group of eight notes, and moving it across 
different sets of strings like this. And notice I'm only picking the first note in that whole lick. You know, I'm picking the A note, and from there on, it's all left hand. It requires a lot of physical strength, and I think the exercises I just showed you will really help you build up that if you don't already have it. And uh, one thing that you'll find is that by tensing up and really trying to play hard with your left hand is going to be the worst thing you can do. The more you practice the exercises I showed you, the more you'll learn how to relax your left hand and just be really light, and you'll be able to do, you know, licks like this, you know, very light with no tension in your arm, and it'll be a lot easier than trying to play it hard. Okay, so my second idea is going to be based on two strings, and it's going to be something that moves down the neck and back up the neck, and here it is. And here it is slowed down. Notice I'm picking the first note on each string and the rest are hammers and pulls. Here's a cool idea. My next lick is going to be a simple four note lick. It's just going to be the notes A, C, B, C. And again, you're just going to pick the first notes and hammer the rest. And you can move that across the strings and it's a cool lick. There's a bunch of different things you can do with just that basic, simple four note idea. Now, here's a three note idea. It's going to be the notes C, A, and B. And uh, you can take that and move it across the strings. All kinds of cool things you can do with that particular run. Okay, the next idea would be A, C, B. There's all kinds of, you know, neat little ideas you can do with that idea also. Okay, now another cool thing with hammers and pulls and the left hand type of playing is to use it with pentatonic stuff. So let's take some pentatonic licks and break them down. Here's the first example. Here it is, slow down. Okay, so that's all a bunch of pull-offs. Let's do that using some hammer-ons. All right, now let's slow that down. So there's a bunch of cool things you can do with pentatonic stuff. All right, here's one of my favorite ideas using stuff based on pentatonics, but it kind of goes outside the pentatonic scale, but you, you'll get the idea. Here it is. And here's, here it is slow. And that's just a series of hammer-ons. Now, another cool thing you can use 
here is diminished type of run. So I'm going to play you a diminished run that I played on my latest record, Time Odyssey. It's in a song called, uh, what is that song called? Race with Destiny. Here it is. I'll play it for you and then I'll slow you the diminished run down. <laughs> All right, now what, that last lick was the one I was talking about. I'll slow that down for you, and it's just a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs. Here it is. A lot of my friends were complimenting on me on that, how fast I picked that particular line. I never told them that it was all hammer-ons and pulls, so if you happen to see any of them, don't even mention it to them. But you know, that's just another example of how you can take some hammer-ons and do some diminished type of runs. It's really hard because they're wide sh stretches and also because you're skipping a string in there. But if you work on it, you can come up with some cool things based on this idea. There's all kinds of things you can do. Oh, so, okay, so my last and final lick here is going to be one of my favorite ones. It's just a simple eight-note type of idea. I'll show it to you and show you how you can move it around. Okay, now here's what you can do with it. You can move it across the strings. There's all, all kinds of things you can do with that line also. And so experiment with all these ideas and move them around to different positions and keys and try to come up with as many possibilities as you can. All right, so that pretty much completes not only this section, but my entire video here. Hope it's been a help to you. I hope, I hope it can really help you out here with some of the different ideas, especially the mode section. So thank you very much for tuning in, and see you next time. Bye. Play a tune. Play a tune. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna end with a few licks that I just went over just to show you how you can build cool left hand type of things based on these ideas.